Jesus taught us, <clears throat> and he taught us this at this table, that without blood, <clears throat> there's no remission for sins, and that his blood was shed for the remission of sins. And the apostles preached about redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins. And under the old covenant, it was made clear that the sacrifice of an animal, the giving of life of an animal and the shedding of its blood was necessary. <clears throat> and throughout the scripture, God has taught us that death is associated with sin and death is the penalty for sin. And all these things are true. However, the Apostle Paul gives us another perspective in, in addition to this. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17, he says, And if Christ be not raised, ye are, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. <clears throat> so Jesus indeed bore all our sins in his body on the tree, and he shed his blood for our sin and declared, It is finished, and yielded up his spirit to God. His suffering for the payment of sins is finished, but everything that is required to save us from sin is not finished. Salvation is much more than just the forgiveness of sins. Salvation requires a Christ that has been raised from the dead. <clears throat> and I thought it would be good to consider some of what the scriptures say about the importance of this, about Christ being raised. <clears throat> The, the prophet Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Jesus, you know, did not submit to death for his sins, but he laid down his life for our sins. <clears throat> Peter said, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. But if Jesus were not raised from the dead, how would we know that that is true? <clears throat> If Christ be not raised, then perhaps Jesus did have sin of his own. For his resurrection is proof that he had no place in the grave, for the grave is for sinners. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. If Christ be not raised, then death does have dominion over him. Then he does not have the keys to death and to hell. And if death has dominion over our Savior, how can he rescue you from death? <clears throat> how is he going to raise us from the dead if he be not raised? If Christ be not raised, your, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. And if Christ be not raised, then baptism means absolutely nothing. Then there is no being raised to walk in newness of life. Then there is no living with him and being alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Furthermore, if Christ be not raised, then there is no operation of God in baptism. The raising up part is the operation of God. Jesus sacrificed himself, but God raised him up from the dead. If God did not raise Jesus up, then he surely will not raise us up either. And baptism means nothing. Keep in mind that Peter teaches that we are saved by baptism. But if baptism means nothing, then there is no newness of life for us. There is no new creation, and all that's left is the same old sinful Adam Adamic nature, which we had before, and we have not been delivered from sin in that. <clears throat> if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. And what about this lively hope that Peter spoke of? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, we would have to take that word lively out of there because there's nothing lively about death. And then, of course, we would have to take the word hope out of the text because both our hope and the thing that makes our hope lively is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If Christ be not raised, then there is no great high priest. There is no intercessor, no one to bless us, no one to turn men from sins. There is no Savior if Christ is dead because salvation is not over when sins are forgiven. Who is going to grant repentance? Who will give faith? Who will send the Holy Spirit? 
In order for God to be pleased with us and bless us, Christ must needs have presented his own blood in the most holy place. He must live and reign at the right hand of the Father as the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. If Christ be not raised, then God is not satisfied, and his requirement to have everything reconciled to him cannot be met. And if God is not satisfied, then we can be certain that he is not going to bless Adam's sinful race. If Christ be not raised, ye are yet in your sins. How shall we believe that God imputes righteousness to us if Christ is not raised? But for us also to whom it shall be imputed, that is, righteousness by faith, if, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. If Jesus was not raised from the dead, how are we going to believe that God has imputed righteousness to us? The entire economy of faith falls to the ground if Jesus is not raised from the dead. Without Jesus being raised, there can be no faith in God. There can be no faith that God will or that God even can impute righteousness to us. And there is no justification. God would not be justified in imputing righteousness to us if Christ were not raised. And furthermore, furthermore, we would know by experience that we were not justified. There certainly would not be any drawing near to God without the risen Savior. Amen. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Again I say, if Christ be not raised... Your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. A few other things to consider. How could we be free from the law as a means of righteousness and married to Christ if Christ be not raised? How could the Spirit quicken your mortal bodies if he did not first quicken Christ? What exceeding greatness of his power would be toward us if Christ be not raised? We know this power is given to usward because he first raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. We've already seen it work. <clears throat> and if Christ be not raised, we certainly can't sit with him in heavenly places. Then there is no way of escape from temptations, no place of refuge, no walking in the spirit, and etc., and etc. Salvation and life eternal depend upon the lamb that was slain, being raised from the dead. But... Unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. Amen. So, brethren, I declare to you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ who was dead and is alive. Christ is risen from the dead and ye are no longer in your sins.